Hi, everybody. It's KJ, and I'm here today with Danny Combs. He is with TAC. Uh, TAC is a phenomenal program that gives individuals with autism who are transitioning to adulthood more opportunities to excel and actually engage with the community, right? Yes, so, uh, so what I wanted to do was I wanted to have Danny talk to us about TAC and um, how this program can expand even further and help your community. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. I'm so excited to, to be here talking to you. And as we were just talking before, you're a fellow North Carolinian, so it makes me happy to, to see people from my home state. Um, so thank you. So yeah, so TACT is a program that we started in 2016. And so we're just actually celebrating exactly this month, actually, in the 29th of um, April is when we announced the idea to the world. And so six years and three days from now, which is kind of exciting. And, um, you know, the neat thing about our program is we've been able to serve Gosh, I mean, a lot, a lot of individuals. So it's been kind of pretty substantial. So I started it. Uh, my son Dylan has autism. And when I learned that he has autism and I started looking at some of the statistics and different things we're going to be talking about here in a little bit, it became just kind of terrifying. And to see not just what was available for him as a child, but what his future looked like as an adult um, became just kind of this, um, oh no, I can't let this happen to my son kind of moment. Uh, so I was actually a professional musician before this. So I was fourth generation trades. My great grandfather and grandfather worked in aerospace. My dad was a general contractor. And actually when you're fourth generation trades, you run to Nashville, right? And go from do music for a living. So that's what I did. And um, when my son was diagnosed with autism, I put my guitar down and started this in here. And um, we work with individuals on the autism spectrum for job training, specifically towards working to find them gainful employment. As you know, the autism community is the highest unemployed group in the country at nearly a 90% under unemployment rate. And not just having jobs for our students, we want them to have actual careers. Um, so I hope we can kind of dive in and talk about how we do that here at TACT. And we use a variety of different skill trades as vessels for developing employment skills, social skills, community skills, um, to kind of holistically approach the way of training and educating an individual to be successful in the uh, marketplace towards finding jobs. And then we partner with dozens upon dozens of local businesses, get them placed into career advancement, and then let them flourish and showcase to the world their strengths. So it's kind of exciting. This is phenomenal. As we know with autism, there you've met one person. When you meet one person with autism, you've met one person with autism. So there's yeah. a variety of social, physical, cognitive skills, strengths. Yeah. What are some of the qualifiers or pre-qualifiers for someone to enter your program? That's a great question. So as a dad, we have a couple different programs. I should should qualify that and um, explain it. So um, the biggest thing is having autism or an intellectual developmental delay or disability, because um, we were very, very heavily grant and funded by foundations and donors. As a dad, we've set it up where nobody that wants to come to TAC really has to pay to come to TAC. We want it to be accessible to anybody from any socioeconomic class. If they wanna be here, if they want their child to be here, we want them to be here. We wanna provide those opportunities. Um, and so a lot of times those is kind of just, if you have a grant, you need to be able to have the documentation to kind of back it up. So those are some of the qualifiers. But we have a whole bunch of programs that are for youngers to get them exploring and exposed to the idea of the trades. As schools have kind of completely cut out all of the skilled trades and pushed college, which is great. I have a master's degree. Yay. Glad I did it. Um, it, you know, takes away this kind of incredible pathway for so many individuals. They never get the chance to see if it's for them. And how do you know if you're interested in something if you haven't had the chance to try it? So we have a bunch of camps and workshops that we get kids ex exposed to and get them to explore the, the trades. And we have a mobile program that goes to them in a variety of different schools, facility schools, inner city schools, general comprehensive schools, kind of all over the place. And then our career tracks program here works with right now this semester, for example, 64 individuals. And we're working with those 64 individuals in this career tracks program this semester towards finding that job. And they tend to be in the transitional, so the 18 to 21 age is what Colorado views, older all the way through their 30s. And then as we're working with them to develop their strengths, listen to what they want to do with their life, find employers that are like-minded, and then get them placed into that career. So what would you say, so where would they need to be with regards to communication skills or yeah. physical skills? Like what, what would they need to do? Is there a certain IQ level like 65 or? No. So, you know, 
the hardest thing for you know families on the autism spectrum a lot of times are resources right it's expensive to raise a child with autism so we have a team that also advises them on what resources kind of is like an advocate approach are available and accessible to them however time consuming a lot of those are because the paperwork for those things sometimes is just wild um, to get all of those i's dotted and t's crossed um, but we take the full range of the autism spectrum. So there's some autism programs that seem to kind of, you know, it's a spectrum. So some people try to focus on different parts. We take the full spectrum. So we have individuals that wow. use wow. alternative forms of communication to talk. We have individuals that are not bathroom dependent. We have, um, you know, they used to call it Asperger's. We don't call it that anymore, but they, you know, with high functioning, which I don't really like that either. <laughs> so I put in air quotes. I just find that it's an individual, right? And find that individual, meet that individual where they are irregardless of those labels. And um, our program is one-on-one -on -one in the sense that um, it's very differentiated for each individual. Um, within the classes, it's a three to one ratio, um, never more than six kids per class. Um, and when I say a three to one ratio, it's a real three to one ratio, not the fancy, you know, some organizations like accounting a board member and the administrative assistant and counting all those to come up with some fancy ratio. It's a genuine um, small ratio that we're set up on for, you know, helping everybody be successful. I love that. I love that. Because one of the key things of, that you'll hear with autism is the frustration with communication. Uh -huh. Like kids are, they say, oh, they're not talking. Well, they are talking. It's just that you may not understand what right. they're saying or speak their language. You know, with, with it's, communication. It's communication it's, disorder at that point. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Communication is 55% body language, 38% tone, 7% words. So if they you yeah. take out the words, right, you still got 93% of communication. Yeah. You just have to learn how to work within those methods. But a lot of times we go straight to words and that and limit that with regards to communication as far as what we're, we're saying, and as well as our expectation of what they can or cannot do. You know, they can't right. talk, so they can't do it. You know, they couldn't do this. So they 100%, do it. yeah. So I and love the fact that you're looking at various ways of communicating and thank you helping individuals. Well, I welcome. mean, it helps us be better individuals. And I mean, we're, you know, as a dad, I want, you know, my son's voice to be heard. I want our students' voices outside to be heard. And I mean, that being said, 20% of our staff is on the autism spectrum. 75% of our wow. board either um, is on the spectrum, or has a child on the spectrum. We want it to be, you know, our community speaking for our community. Um, you know, you meet a lot of well-meaning people that do incredible work, but we never want it to be the autism community is being told what they need to do. Um, we want- I love you, Danny. Is to stand up for itself. <laughs> and like, if we can be a vessel for that, then that's what we're gonna do. So um, the hair gets grayer. You know, if you would have met me six years ago, my hair was brown, now it's gray, but that's okay. So still there, so that's good, right? But the passion, the drive and everything, because you know, autism is not textbook. No. I mean, we fail all the time. And I mean, we feel like if we're failing, we're, it means we're pushing ourselves and trying to do better. Like if we're sitting in this complacent little section where everything is perfect all the time, then we're not really pushing the, the boundaries. And, um, you know, we find new employers all the time. You know, just this morning we met with more. We have meetings after this with more. Um, the neat thing is we can be partner with all of these community partners. And this is where I get excited. My passion comes from is, you know, we highlight the strengths and talents and ability of our students. And then we let that speak, right? We develop these portfolios. And then when these employers view these portfolios, they recognize the ability that's there that they haven't even looked at, right? That they haven't even considered this entire demographic that's completely disenfranchised. They didn't even know it was there, let alone know to look for like these valuable employees when they see the quality of the work and they hire them and they see that, okay, you know, Colorado State University did a study. They found that individuals with autism when placed in their strengths had a 98.6% on task time and a 94% retention rate. That's more than double the average on, um, on task time and exceptionally more for retention rate, especially in this day and age where people just quote unquote ghost somebody and just don't show up for work or anything. Our kids are getting place, they're doing a good job and they stick. And so then those organizations, HR costs come down, their productivity actually goes up and because they have good quality workers. And then so they go to other companies and say, hey, the candidates that are coming out of TACT are exceptional, we wanna hire them. So the two uh, companies that we've met with, just you know, the one this morning and the one after this meeting were recommended. These aren't companies that we reached out to or solicited that they know other people in the industry hired tact graduates we're so happy that those businesses go out and say this is where i'm getting people from and it's working 
I think that's really cool. I mean, like some of it's like not stuff you would think about. One is an electrical company that's running like heavy conduit. You know, you hear of like the stereotypes of, you know, autism. And I was reading a study from Harvard yesterday that was talking about, you know, kids with autism should be put in computer jobs because it's quiet and it's sterile and the communication, all this stuff. Our kids are, you know, building the new Amazon company like out there. They're doing the new Highway 70 project. They're doing metal work on big commercial buildings. They're putting lift kits in garages, like things that, you know, the people that are, you know, way, no, way more than me would probably look at and say like, hey, the, how is that possible? But when you set up our kids for success and you start listening and paying attention to what they can do rather than telling them what they can do, you would be blown away with what's possible. And so many kids come to us all the time and they're like, and this is a, one of example I like to share, we have so much safety equipment because we're teaching skill trades, right? So we have to have lots of safety equipment. And so we have a, like a giant collection of headphones, like the big, you know, sound headphones. And when our kids first get here, they gravitate towards those headphones because they've been told by therapists and doctors that are awesome and well-meaning, but may not know how it works in the job setting. Hey, you are sensitive to sound, so you need headphones. So they come to it. And, and you have to wear this. You have to wear the headphones, right? And I mean, it's good practice. If you're around loud tools. Of course, you want to take, you know, the safety precautions for, you know, um, loud sounds. But then they realize, hey, I don't actually need that because this doesn't really bother me. Like I was told that it bothers me or, you know, the sensation of hot motor oil. I was told that I'm sensitive to this, but actually it doesn't really bother me. And so, um, it's amazing. Like, you know, I always say that the magic of tact is when you come and you watch the kids and you see that moment, because I can promise you on these kids, you can see it on their face. The moment that they realize like, oh my gosh, I can do this. Like, this is actually what I like. And I'm not afraid of this. Um, Danny, that kind of goes back to what you were saying in the beginning, where you have those programs that prepare people yeah. for, for what comes next. And I, I think one of the gaps is, is that we have programs over here mm -hmm. and we have programs over here, but those pre-employment skills yeah. are sometimes missed. So yeah. either you have it or you don't. If you don't have it, then you're out. Right. And, and, and I, I used to homeschool my sons, right? And the funniest thing is my son, Jay, who um, he was tested by the school psychologist in first grade. He scored ninth grade spelling, fourth, fifth grade math, high second grade reading comprehension. Mm -hmm. And the school psychiatrist, Dr. Julia Zorko asked, like, how do you do this? I said, you know what I do? I said, I do the exact opposite of what everybody else tells me to do. I said, <laughs> we, I you, you. you know, there we yeah. go, right? Yeah. I said, I teach my kids throughout the entire day, mm -hmm. but we'll do an hour on, hour off, two hours off, right. whatever. I say, yeah. I teach them, I teach them in our office. I teach them in their bedroom. I teach them in the car when we're driving. I mm -hmm. teach them, you know, right. when we're at Great yeah. Adventures, we go, we sit on the side, we read a book and then we keep going because that, what happens is because a lot of times um, uh, um, training programs for individuals with autism teach very finite barriers uh -huh. Or completely learning. segmented and segregated. Absolutely. 100%. When you take them out of that finite uh -huh. environment, they're like, woo, 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 woo. All these mm -hmm. things are going off because they're not used to learning or developing or growing outside of that environment. And so uh, a challenge also with some of the programs that they use for kids is they yeah. teach them in a very sterile environment. 100%. I teach you in a sterile really environment and then I send you out to work over here on a construction yeah. place where people are going blah, 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 and you're not ready for it. Well, so, I mean, to your point, and you're, I completely agree with you, you're 100% on point. So, you know, I told you I went to Nashville and did music. I have an undergraduate degree and a master's degree in music. And when I did music, I had this great professor and he would always talk about before recital, put on your tux and practice in your tux. Because what happens is if you practice authentically for success and what the performance is, then you're more likely to succeed because you'll see people, especially, you know, in classical music, they have to wear a tux and they look all nice but they've never practiced in that. And that holds your body different. You're it's tighter, stiff. the instrument slides and moves different. And then you're on stage and you're nervous, you're anxious, you're in a, you know, you can't see the audience because everybody thinks, you know, with the bright lights and you're looking at, you can't see. So all of a sudden the lighting's different, their reverberation's different. And then your alpha's different. All of a sudden, all of these different variables. And if you don't practice in that environment, 
that can set people up for failure. So practicing for success and you're 100% right by taking them out of that sterile environment and making it real and authentic to what the actual world is. That's the way that people used to learn. I mean, if you think about like the, I always joke about like the way my grandfather and great-grandfather learned, you know, they worked in aerospace. My grandfather and great-grandfather helped design the lunar module, which is super cool. Those guys did that without like fancy PhDs and like without fancy, you know, collegiate educations, but they learned in an authentic way that you look at what they could do. My grandfather is near 90 at this point. He can still do math in his head that many people couldn't do like with a fancy calculator because that's the way that they learned in a real way. Um, I give you credit for doing that. I think it's great. And my dad wouldn't use my dad wouldn't use the computer. It's the funniest. He's like, these things are going away. These things are going away. So he did math in his head. Like yeah, my dad was yeah. really, really smart. And he used to read the dictionary. So it was so funny because he was like, these things are going away. These things are going away. And then uh, you know, a couple of years later, I was like, Dad, what are you doing? He's like, I'm working on the computer. I said, I thought you said they were going away. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> but he, you know, he's still until the day of his until the day of his death. He yeah, he used to do the math in his head. It was super duper smart. Super yeah. duper smart. So listen, this, like I said, this is a phenomenal program. There are a lot of things out there for uh, younger kids, a lot of programs, uh, educational and, and recreational. And, mm -hmm. and, and right now, to be honest with you, when you think about it, I have to look at my numbers because I want to make sure I don't mess it up. Um, well, no, actually, I'm going to do it from off the top of my head. It's $196 billion, the economic cost or economic burden for adults with autism. And it's about 61 to $66 billion, the mm -hmm. economic cost for kids. So you're thinking it's three mm -hmm. times higher the economic cost for adults yeah. and trans transitioning of individuals. But there aren't a lot of resources out there for them. You know, yeah. you think about think about the playgrounds and the slides. You know, I have a picture actually of one of my sons trying to go down the slide to show that a lot of entertainment and engagement and recreational activity and those because remember repetition is everything you know yeah. those opportunities to repeat mm -hmm. those social skills and those physical skills and those cognitive skills they're really and truly designed for 12 and under yeah. or you know even sedentary things with regards to the uh the gaming right. so um what you're doing is phenomenal uh i love it i love it i love it um i can this model be duplicated we hope so. You know, we get reached out from everybody. We're, we're sadly still the only ones in the country doing this, which kind of honestly breaks our heart. And we're open books. Like we love to talk to people. We talk to people all the time from different states that are calling that are wanting to do something similar. The neat thing about TACT is, you know, we have a six year head start and we're the only ones doing this. So we have like six years of experience working with thousands of kids that have come through our program from all across, you know, we have four kids in our program this year that are here every day that moved from across the country to come just for this. We have kids that, you know, the school districts that will bust the kids five hours for programs to come here because we're the only ones doing this. So, I mean, there is that demand. Like you were saying, there's not programs for, you know, older individuals, for adults, for transitional age um, students and um, clients that are wanting to come through. So the goal is to take it and actually to replicate it. The hardest thing that we're finding is not actually replicating our philosophy, our methodology, um, anything like that. What we're finding is hard to replicate is the funding for parents in the sense that, you know, I kind of at our mission and our core is to make it as accessible for parents as possible with all the different scholarships and grants that we have. We don't want to be one of those programs personally that is fee for service out of pocket, you know, like, oh, you know, your parents can afford a $25,000 a year private school. Great, here is tact. We don't want to be that program because that eliminates so many from our community that have the opportunity to actually grow and learn and discover what they want for their passion. And every state in our great country funds autism differently. And man, it is so tricky trying to figure out how to navigate a you know state to state countrywide funding stream. Where I hope yeah. that we're going to be successful is we actually merged with Easter Seals, became an affiliate of Easter Seals of Colorado Affiliate Network. And that was a year ago in January. And Easter Seals, as you know, is one of the largest nonprofits in the country. Yes, and yes. And using that network and their partnership is they're amazing. We're hoping to take what they've already have figured out and then take our program across the country. So we're actually going in October to the National Easter Seals Conference to present it to the rest of the affiliates to say, hey, this is what we're doing here in Colorado and it's working. Let's bring it everywhere. So, hey, Dana, crossed. you know what? I'm putting it. I'm putting in a plug for North Carolina too. UNC Chapel Hill <laughs> is doing some pretty amazing things with autism. So I heard. What, yeah, yeah, what, yeah. That's my school. So, <laughs> um, 
So one of the things that I want to mention is spe specifically teach, T-E-A-C-C-H right. for autism. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I want to mention is, which can be really deceptive, is there are programs for people who are of lower economic status. There's government right. funding, there's government support. There are so many people who we would consider middle class or middle okay. range that are, that are probably less than paycheck to paycheck because uh -huh. of the economic burden of autism 100%. and yeah, they get no right support. Yeah. They get no support. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know, when you have programming that's funding, you're really reaching a large population that is overlooked. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. And I mean, that's the neat thing. Like when we do our grant and scholarships, we don't take that kind of, you know, data because you're right. Like it's same kind of things for kids growing up and they apply for the FAFSA for college. If their parents are in that middle area, that makes it that much harder for that. So it's like the two extremes of the bell curve are being reached rather than the whole middle section. So, um, you know, we look at individuals coming here. We are lucky to have, you know, really great foundations and supporters that recognize what we're doing has value and, um, you know, give us a bucket of funds that we can divvy out to those individuals to get them here. So, so we're I love to... it. Love it. So Easter Seals, UNC, some of these <laughs> athletes out there, Dan Marino, Doug Flutie, some of those other people. Yeah. Uh, Danny would like to hear from you. So <laughs> I would, we would love it. I mean, we're, you know, we are excited. We're going to be getting into a new space. Uh, we're under contracts with fingers crossed that everything goes through the inspections on a new building. It'll be three times the size of what we're in a 6,000 square foot building now. Um, we're supposed to close in June on an 18,000 square foot new facility um, that will allow us to just serve that many more. Um, wow. So fingers crossed that we're able to expand here locally and then keep it going. And also is, yeah. and also expand globally. You know, yes, why not? That would be amazing. Why not? <laughs> why not? Don, Danny, if somebody wanted to reach you or wanted to find out more about tech, what would they do? How did they go about this process? That's a great question. So please visit our website. So buildwithtact.org is our website. We have a Facebook page and, and LinkedIn, different things like that are great ways to, to get a, across to us. Uh, but on buildwithtact.org is our phone number. There's a map, there's forms to fill out our complete staff. We put everybody's email addresses on there. So you can reach out and ask questions about funding, about um, application process, about everything. So um, hopefully it's accessible to anybody that wants to go there and learn more. And then we can usually get back to people pretty quickly. So, I yeah. love it. Man, I wish I could come out there to see you. I wish I could come out well, there to learn about it. Anytime you're in Colorado, give me a call. We'll have fun. <laughs> you got it. You got it. Hey, guys, this is Danny Combs from, um, from TAC, and he's sharing more insight on opportunities for individuals with autism, younger, transition, up to age 30, or even over yeah, 30. That's where we're at now. We actually have individuals older than 30, but until we get a bigger staff, yeah. We are small but mighty. <laughs> so Danny, through thirties, say through thirties. Yeah. Let me, let me ask something. You said um, just for a reference for people who yeah. were listening. You said staff and sixty-four people at this time. How many people are on your staff? We have thirteen people on our staff right now. So we have no member, no more than six kids per class. So we'll have classes in the morning, and we have classes in the afternoon. And then we have you know weekend classes, mobile classes. So everybody's kind of juggling. And then we're not like a traditional nonprofit in the sense that we have just administrators, we all teach. So like I still teach some of the classes, Becky that gets all of our DVR and Medicaid stuff, she's teaching classes. All of us are hands-on involved in the lives of our students to do whatever we can for them, so. And then do you have volunteers also that come in? Oh yeah, we have a whole bunch of volunteers. So this Friday, for example, Charles Schwab is coming out and volunteering, they have 20 Who? volunteers coming out. Charles Schwab. Oh, are uh, you serious? Yeah, and they're giving us, um, so they've been amazing, they're another amazing partner. Um, so Danny, you are amazing. Well, thank you. <laughs> Keep going. I don't know about that. We're trying. So um, all of our students are then getting toolkits too as they enter the workforce because in skill trades tools are expensive. So all of our students will be presented with tools that they need to kind of start their career on the right foot. So I mean, the neat thing about TACT is they're getting trained, they're getting job placement, they're getting job coaching while out in the job, they're getting the tools to do the job, all hopefully debt free, so that you know their lives are set up for success. So. This is amazing. Did you hear recently that Tommy Hilfiger, Tommy Hilfiger has seven children and three of them have autism or on the autism? I have not heard that, but I, that would be a good resource to reach out to as well. I'm just, yeah. just saying, just yeah. saying, as long as you're looking, right? Well, once again, Danny, thank you so much for everything. I really appreciate uh, all that you provided. If you could just give us your website information and yes, anything thanks. else that you'd like to share with regards to 
um, contacting. And um, I hope that this interview with Shell was helpful help you along the way. Well, thank you. So our website again is buildwithtact.org. So if anybody can visit www.buildwithtact.org, that would be great. Well, tact. Uh, tact is T-A-C-T, -T, like great. you're being tactful. Yep. Excellent. All right, Danny. Thank you once again for everything. Yes, ma'am. My pleasure. Thank you. Take care.